So you, you guys know the drill. I want to see some likes and I want to see some stonks in chat, <laughs> some hype. So the, the first thing was that Wall Street has taken a real bad hit out of all of this shenanigans. So this is Reuters reporting that they've lost $70 billion on short <laughs> positions. So it's, it really wasn't just that one financial firm Oof. that's lost $5 billion. Like $70 billion is just gone, you know, Oof. distributed to the, the S posters. To the people. Yeah, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, yeah, you can imagine losing this much money and starting to make them worried. So they, they fought back. And the way they fought back is by dirty means, because how else are they going to fight back? Yeah. So if we can get the next one up, this is Robin Hood's um, saying. So yeah. Robin Hood is a, a marketing app um, that lets you buy and sell stocks through an app on your phone. And again, just going to pre-reference everything we're saying. This is not financial advice. Uh, we are morons, just like everyone else on Wall Street Bets. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is cultural advice, though. Yeah. So Robinhood have said that in light of market volatility, we're restricting transactions on certain securities um, and closing positions. So this is worrying. So they essentially just came out and said, if you're wanting to buy GameStop, we're not going to let you do that. That's really can't, weird. Can't buy it. And yet they allowed them to continue selling it, didn't they? You can continue to sell the stock, but you can't buy the stock. So the only thing that can happen from that point onwards is the stock becomes less valuable. Yeah. Which would only stock... help the short position, which is the Wall Street position. Exactly. The stock becomes more valuable when people buy it, and if you can't buy it, then it can only become less valuable, which mm. means that all of those people who bought GME uh, are now on holding Robin on Robinhood are now holding something that can't appreciate in value. They were they were completely screwed over by this. Which... And it's done deliberately by the company with the intent, presumably, of protecting the hedge funds. So there are some uh, some accusations because one of Robinhood's yeah. major investors is one of the organizations that took out huge amounts of shorts. Oh, really? That they're you know essentially giving them a backroom deal. Yes, that's um, exactly what that looks that's, like. That's how it looks, and yeah. uh, I can't blame people for thinking that's how it's going. I mean, it looks like the corruption is just out in the open. And if that wasn't bad enough, the idea that they were just going to stop people from being able to buy and trade yeah, their yeah. own stock, they apparently started selling people's stock. So if you had stock, they were just going to sell it and you didn't have to give consent. So sell it for you. Yeah. Despite the fact that you wanted to hold it. Without your consent. You wanted to keep it so it could, you know, be part of the meme or for it to yeah. go up or whatever. And no, they would like, that's not your choice. That's our choice. We're that's, gonna sell the stock. That's incredible. Which mask is mask off. Just mask fully off. Like, imagine if the bank came in to your house tomorrow and said, We're selling your house. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> like, Sorry, I thought this was mine. I, I own it, but yeah. no, apparently apparently not. So this this was the rumor at the time that Robinhood has re reportedly begun automatically selling shares in GameStop for some customers uh, for their own good. And oh, for my own good. Thanks. Thanks. So I mean, I don't own any stock, but like, you know, from the position of the person who's bought into this because they want to, uh, they just like the stocks. Uh, how how can it be for my own good? I'm, I'm more than happy. Very much reminds stock. me of the, the meme of like, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah. You know, we're selling your stock for your good. That's yeah. why we're doing it. No, no, no one believes Amazing. that. Amazing. And it, it wasn't just rumors. We started getting screenshots of people claiming that, you know, I <laughs> I had, so, what was that, 4,500 shares? Yeah. And they've just sold them at this price point so um, against my will. How do they choose the price? So it's whatever prices at the market value at the time. I, I but that's the think. reason I wasn't selling it. I surely was waiting for that market value to continue going up, which it undoubtedly is going to when stock shares uh, trading become, becomes open today. Yeah, apparently, apparently Robinhood doesn't care what your will is wow. or your property rights. Um, so, so, so let me let me let me try and understand this in a very basic way because I'm a complete idiot. It sounds very much like Robinhood has sided with the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, that's exactly how it looks. And people are rightfully irritated about this whole thing. Um, oh, I, real. I did see, uh, we'll get into it later. But the, <laughs> um, So I saw some people talking about this who know more than us, presumably. Yeah. And the next one is, is a guy saying that this uh, very much might be technically legal. So mm -hmm. the understanding is that apparently in the terms of service, they have the right to do this. Sure. But... Lots that's of immoral the, things are legal, though. That's the selling of the stock itself. Mm. The idea that we're protecting you from bubbles which I can see a reasoning for, but Jesus Christ. In, in normal times, sure. If it was just like, you know, unconnected, just randos who were just like, oh, that looks good. And there was something about it. Sure, maybe you could make an argument, but this is clearly not what's happening. It's clearly the people who know what they're doing. And the effect is obviously anyone who trades with Robinhood or is thinking about trading with Robinhood. Why would you? Yeah. Like they're just openly saying, we will sell your positions against your will. Yeah, you're not in control of the stock. So. We are. Why on earth would you use that app from now on? And good question. Most people on Wall Street Bets are apparently abandoning them because that's been the Sensibly. the the uh, app that most people use apparently. And then mm -hmm. this is this has happened. So, yeah, this this has got to go. 
but there's been a, a, a class action lawsuit in response to what's going on here. Now, my understanding is this was filed in response to them saying that you couldn't buy the stock. Right. So that you could still sell it, but you yep. couldn't buy it. I don't know if there'll be another one in response to them for selling people's stock. Mm. And again, we don't know anything about the legal side of this. No. But, but we'll find out when all of these things end up going through the courts, won't we? But people seemingly are quite irritated and think they can win a case and are wanting to go after them. So I mean, it's worth trying, even to, to even if it's just to set the, the decision, right? Because the de decision becomes a precedent, and then that builds on things. Like, I mean, I personally have set precedents in my court case with Aquila for free speech and fair use. So if they can get something good on the, the sort of populist side as a precedent in the courts, that's excellent. That's a worthy win. Yeah. Mm. Um, and obviously this is a, a frightening thing because it's not just Robin Hood. Robin Hood tried to defend themselves on the basis of like, oh, well, other people are doing it too. And it's like, oh, well, that's okay then. So, like, and this is obviously <laughs> the point. It's it's very much like the social media shutdown yeah. of Donald Trump and all the oh. all the dissidents. The various different firms have come together and all suddenly have technical glitches or yeah. all of a sudden they've all decided that you shouldn't be able to buy the stock. And it's like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. We can, we can see the class distinction here. The insiders versus the outsiders and the insiders are closing ranks Yeah, once again. Elon Musk did a, a good tweet in response to this saying that this, this was ridiculous. Um, you can't sell a house you don't own. You can't sell cars you don't own. But you can sell stock that you don't own. How does, how does that make any sense? You know, he's totally right. This, this, Completely this is absurd. Completely it's, agree. It's obviously a money-making scheme. And it's also in the exact opposite vein of uh, Robin Hood. So if you can get the next one, this is just something I saw Robin Hood tweeting out, <laughs> let the people trade. And then just my reaction yeah. to one of the podcasts. Well, we, we, would, we, we are in favour of that too, Robin Hood. Why are you against it? Yeah, so the whole ethos of Robin Hood and the name and all the rest of it <laughs> is that it shouldn't be stockbrokers on Wall Street that get to do all this stuff. Yeah. It should be available for anyone who has a phone. Yeah. You know, anyone should be able to sell. Yeah, yeah. Well, then why are, you, yeah. why are why? you not letting them do that? You better let them buy that stock. This is your company ethos, 101. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, the massive hypocrisy has been revealed. The mask has slipped. You're part of the establishment, and you're just protecting yourselves arbitrarily. Mm. That's what this is. And the mask comes off a little bit more with some of the interviews that have been going on. So this was an interview... Um, with some guy trying to defend the poor defenseless billionaires who are losing their money. <laughs> oh no, someone think of the short-stocking hedge fund managers, quick! <laughs> so this, this is amazing. So he's, he's quoted here as, uh, he's sort of lamenting the people who are engaging in this, as sitting at home with their checks from the government, trading their stocks. <laughs> oh uh, no! Unlike you, who would never take money from the government <laughs> yeah. and trade with it, that would never happen. <laughs> like, this is mind-boggling. <laughs> like, God, did, uh, just, okay. Like, you guys didn't take a check in the form of TARP, did you? No, yeah. that never happened. I mean, what happened in 2008, guys? Who got bailed out there? Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. And he says, uh, this fair share is a BS concept, he shouts. <laughs> it's a way of attacking wealthy people. Oh. Um, why is that bad? Oh. Like I, I'm not saying that we should attack them on the basis of well, uh, they're wealthy, but if they they've been attacking this, regular people financially for many a year and getting of, bailed out for it, that's sort of the re the revenge narrative that's going on here, which I, I'm very sympathetic to in the sense of I. That's because that seems to have been what's happened. Well, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of evidence. Why, why 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 does the taxpayer have to bail them out when they mess up in 2008? Yeah, who, I, who, I'm fully in agreement that what happened in 2008 was wrong. Don't get me wrong, but of course, but am I? If, the way I'm looking at this is more that just <laughs> this is the market at play, mate. Like, if it's yeah. a way of attacking wealthy people. We're not all wealthy people. Because well, Elon... you've got all the money. You can no, give no, it away. No, no, and no, then, it's, uh... not, it's not that. Elon Musk isn't losing anything. That's a good point. It's not attacking wealthy people. That's it's a... attacking people who have messed up their portfolios. Yes. Yet again, you people mess up, and your response is, well, it's not our fault. No. No, you overshot the stock. You guys are getting screwed by people then realizing that yeah. and realizing they can get money out of you. That's the market. Welcome to Wall Street. You just didn't think that millions of eyes would be watching. That's yeah. what this is. They're, they're so used to, you know, no one but them Anonymity. Involved. So yeah. I've, I've got no Love sympathy it. for this. Yeah, this yeah, movie. yeah. And, and you, you do attack poor people, but come. And any, Elon Musk had a, a good counter to this as well, which <laughs> is, here come the shorty apologists. Uh, give them no respect. Get shorty. So <laughs> completely agree, Elon. No quarter. That's yep. that's what yep. I mean here. It's not no the wealthy. Mercy. Elon Musk. Yep. You know that yep. investor we oh, looked yeah, at yeah. was a billionaire. They're yeah. both billionaires. You know, yeah. they're part of the one percent. But Hank, Elon Musk goes full Hank Scorpio. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're not the ones under attack. It's not yeah. those people. Yeah. Because they're not. He's they're leading not, the charge. They're not the ones messing themselves up. Yeah. And there's uh, <laughs> this was a prophecy because of course yes there was defenses of this. 
which is that short sellers are heroes. Oh, thanks, Forbes. <laughs> thanks, Forbes. I mean, we know where your interests lie. Oh, God. oh thank you, short sellers, you, for destroying GameStop and making sure you make loads of money out of nothing. But this, this reminds me of the British election when we had, um, uh, was it Joe Swinson? Yep. Uh, they would give th- like propaganda leaflets. So usually yes. propaganda. They yes. didn't do that for the Lib Dems. They li- gave out like a magazine that was like yeah. Lib Dem Weekly or yeah. something. Oh, uh, Labour suck, Conservatives suck, but Joe Swinson exclu- glows like the sun. Exclusive interview with yeah, Lib yeah. Dem leader from Lib Dem magazine. Yeah. And it was made to look like a, a you yeah, know yeah. a fashion mag or something. Yeah. You know, Forbes, the yeah. short sellers are heroes. I, I can't get over it. Heroes like have- of the Republic, damn it. <laughs> uh, Vader did America wrong. wouldn't be America if we couldn't extract wealth like this. Yeah, it's it's absurd. <laughs> um, so Robin Hood, as I mentioned, had a response to this. We can get it up. So this is an interview um, uh, that he gave. He, he yeah. did a bunch more. The one with Andrew Cuomo is probably the best if you're really interested in Chris watching Cuomo. it. Sorry, Chris, yeah, Chris yeah, Cuomo. He, Chris Cuomo actually went quite hard on him. I watched it this morning. You know, so someone messaged me. If, if, it's if, quite surprised. If we're ever in a position to talk to Chris Cuomo, I reckon he is the guy who will spill the beans. Yeah, like he's so. He's the one who's clearly sick of Don Lemon's BS, Black Lives Matter's BS. You know, this guy's BS. Chris, I agree. They yeah. shouldn't have called you Fredo. No, no. But I reckon he'd be the kind of guy who would call out all the corruption if he was just given a book deal. Maybe. So. Anyone Maybe. who's in a position to do that, that's just an yeah. idea. But yeah, he was he was quite harsh on the guy. It was quite good. Yeah, so he, he made the point that you guys look terrible. Um, what are you doing? And their defense was they really didn't have one. They were just well, like... Well, like he says, we were doing this in order to protect the firm and protect our customers, so we had to limit the buying of these stocks. Protect the firm and protect our customers. Yeah, as in protect Wall Street. Yeah. Who are the customers? Not the I'm, people who are trying to buy. I'm not in agreement that yeah. he views the customers as the people who use Robinhood. Exactly. I think his investors are the people he views as his customers. Exactly. So they're not, not going to buy this. Anyway, this we mentioned last time as well that apparently uh, the White House saying they're monitoring the situation. And, of course, people get a bit worried. Like, what, what are they going to do? And this is the point that uh, they're not bipartisan in this at all. They or are neutral. Very partisan in this yes. issue of who they side with. The White House, the Democratic Party, Joe Biden, side with Wall Street. Yes. They pay for them. They're going to have their backs on this. And Fox News correctly pointing out here that um, one of the one of the members of the, of the uh, White House Democratic Party got $800,000. Well, it's more important that Jan- Janet Yellen is the new Treasury Secretary. Yes. Uh, so, first female. Yeah, the first female <laughs> Treasury Secretary. So, so she's concerned about the government's economic policies. And uh, she took $800,000 in speaking fees from the hedge fund that owned Melvin, which Melvin's insolvent now, right? Uh, they're well, still trading, I think. They're still trading. They right. just lost but 40%. They, right. So, but the, the, it's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah what, <laughs> what was it called? Citadel uh, is, is like the company or hedge fund or whatever that owns them and she took 800k from citadel for speaking fees and uh, it's like right so, so you can see how not only you know the they're protecting themselves like citadels like no these are our assets uh they, you know and then they're giving money to the biden administration right as a it, well, well speaking fees yeah. so what that means is that and i've seen you, you, we saw like hillary clinton doing loads of these for various like goldman sachs and all these sort of banks where she'd just go there give a 20 minute speech and then get paid millions of dollars which is obviously some kind of way of just slushing the money at her to keep her on side to make sure that she's always going to be working their interest etc etc this is how the sort of you know washington network of corruption works yeah, I mean, they could have made a campaign donation if they really care about her message or something. Yeah, but no, they no, want this to is get, about her p- personally, her. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not ideological. They just want their pawns yeah. in place. So she should absolutely recuse herself from any of this because she's totally bought by them. That would no be the, the sensible thing to do to yeah. say, look, I can't give any advice to Joe Biden on this because I'm obviously compromised. Um, yeah. She refused to take that position. The, wow. the White House press secretary said, oh, well, she's taking speaking fees. Loads of people take speaking fees. This isn't an issue. Mask you know? off. I love it. I love when the mask just comes fully off and you get to see the repulsive flesh beneath it. So, yes, we, we all are corrupt and we are going to defend Wall Street. Mm. Well, great. Thanks for telling us, essentially. Yep. And I, I, there, was a, there was a great response to all, all this obvious corruption, which is that it's sort of a prophecy of what's going to happen. But if, <laughs> the solution to all this is obviously just like we saw the, the banning of buying stock. How about we just ban <laughs> selling stock altogether? And then we could eliminate all breakdowns. There would never be a negative day in stock history because we could just ban all selling. Checkmate. That's Because that's how they're looking at this. The idea that you could just ban buying a stock. Okay, well, that's, you know, why not take it to an extreme then? Why not just what ban... What stops them from doing anything? Yeah, anyone who isn't Wall Street can't buy anything. <coughs> I mean, why don't we just do that? Yeah. That would solve the problem. <laughs> ban outside of trading. <laughs> ban outside of trading, yeah. Only inside of trading is allowed. And, and you know, good guy. Anyway, um, so the... 
the guys on Wall Street Bets um, have been holding the line, or at least the yes. interesting ones, and we wanted to give a quick update to the uh, maddest lad alive, uh, Deep <laughs> Effing Value, who's uh, uh, trading on this. So he was looking at $20 million profit out yeah. of his investment yesterday, I think, or the mm -hmm. day before. And then yesterday, he updated this post saying that between then, you know, 24 hours, he's lost $14 million. And he's just like, not selling. No, Good. just going to keep it. Absolute hero of the Republic. <laughs> Holding the line. That's what we need. So he's got a total gain. So from his initial mm -hmm. position, he's still up $18 million. <laughs> but he lost $14 million in a day. And he's just like, don't care. Don't yeah. care. Just going to keep holding. I didn't, I, I made this it. Is, this is the, the grit. This is the test of will. And I, honestly, I've seen nothing but universal hold the line. Yeah, this is all in response to this obvious corruption and the obvious backlash yeah. from Wall Street to shut it down. Yeah. It's, no. No, not going to do it. <laughs> Just love it. I no. love it. This is the best page. No. No. I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Come, oh, everything, come, come and kill me. It's not going to happen. E everything they want you to do re re requires your consent. And if you refuse your consent, then the whole thing grinds to a halt. Mm. I mean, that's what people are finding out here. That mm. If you just all agree, no, mm. you can make some moves. They can remain autistic longer for them than they can <laughs> remain solvent. You know, yes. it works. <laughs> and it's, it's not just, you know, one guy who's, who's an absolute mad lad. There was another one yeah. on, on the forums. Uh, some guy who basically liquidated all his stuff and he's promising to put in $188,000 when the market okay. opens today. I mean... And it's just like, okay. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> just honestly, I just <laughs> salute in the chat. I mean it. I can't like, get over how absurd this is, but this is this is the financial God, world. They've literally doubled the size of the Reddit as well because it was like 2.9 million when I first saw it. Yeah. And now it's 5.8. Oh, that's only going to go up even more. Mm. You know? it's, it's God crazy, damn. Crazy they must place. be afraid. <laughs> Wall Street must be terrified. Well, that's why they're doing these unprecedented things of yeah. being like, we're just going to ban all selling. Mm. You know, sorry, all buying. Yeah, so. well, they don't know what to do. Yeah, and uh, there's there's a point here. So someone posted this uh, talking about what the possible end game is, and it's absurd. <laughs> Not going to happen, but it's yeah. hilarious. Okay, it, it was absurd. But it gets the broader point. But it was absurd yesterday that this today would be now. <laughs> it, and it was absurd the day before that that yesterday would be then. It, and so... It was absurd that GameStop was worth yeah, 420. Yeah. It's still not worth, you know, it's a 300 and something. It's not yeah. worth that either. But yeah. It's rid ridiculous that GameStop was being valued at like 25 billion. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this is where we are. So this guy lays out a new game plan, which is just amazing to read because it really yeah. puts this all into perspective, which that if they, if you could get GameStop price up to $69, uh, $420, Wall Street. <laughs> what a meme. What a meme value. Si you know, <laughs> 69, all, 420, all of right. Wall Street would be bankrupt as in not just one firm the whole thing would go so he's like you know the short value would be then three trillion two hundred billion dollars um which means all of them all of them would go like they none of them would have any money yeah i mean we we say we say it's never going to get that high obviously it's never going to get that high I bloody well hope not but it, but, a global it, but, recession <laughs> yeah, yeah obviously <laughs> but it gets to the broader point here which is that you know if if we want to take this view that um, this is a nothing burger. I really don't think it is. I, I think it's absolutely amazing. Like a lot yeah. of money is being moved around here. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people are getting rich. A lot of yeah. people are kind of just burning it for a laugh. Yeah. Um, but it sort of pulls the whole thing bare. The idea that yes, if we actually did all decide, if we could convince I don't know a billion people around the world just to throw money in, and it would skyrocket to this value, you could actually destroy the entire economy. <laughs> Jesus. And John was making the point that this is um, this is. You know, God. some people have been looking at this as like, isn't it funny and all the rest of it like we have. Oh, like I am, yeah. Yeah, like but laugh. Uh, there's a funnier laugh point here, world burns. which is this is just essentially all they've done here is made it so that anyone can communicate with the world. It's a point of the internet that we mm. can now communicate with a third of the planet. Okay, yeah. Click. And if you organize enough people into doing a singular thing at a single point, Jesus Christ, the damage you can cause is amazing. Well, it's always the question. If you could organize a billion people in China to jump up and down at the same time, could you change the axis of the Earth's rotation or something? No. I'm pretty well, sure the answer's no. I'm but... pretty sure the answer's no there. <laughs> but is the question, if you get a billion people to join Wall Street's <laughs> and trading, and, and can you re can you change the axis of the economy? The answer appears to be yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And what, uh, I'm loving how these little inside clubs that have always existed, mm. you know, they've had their heydays in like the 80s and 70s mm. or whatever, and now it's all massively wide open. Yeah. And just every insider club is getting destroyed. Yeah. It's why I'm kind of hopeful about the swamp. Like, yeah, okay, Joe Biden's back in and, and yeah, so yeah. on and so forth. But they can't Mask do this. Mask off. They can't Mask do off. this forever. Yeah. Like, 
enough people will just end up waking up. They, they're showing everyone exactly what they are, and it's fantastic. You know, and you're actually you're absolutely right about the sort of insider clubs. The media is the same thing. Yeah, you know, they, they, they the media what... is like we've been saying for the last 10, 20 years. The media is dying slowly. Yeah, you know, no one. But they're an insider it. club, and they don't like the fact that those outside are gaining any influence. Yes, I mean, Epoch Times got demonetized on YouTube the other day. So what? They they're just like a Christian conservative website. They they're not like spewing Nazi rhetoric or something, but uh, but deplatformed. But it's it's wonderful, and that's why I'm kind of hopeful because mm. you can see the media like even with all the backlash and all the nonsense that goes on, YouTube giving preferential treatment to yeah. CNN, for example, it doesn't really matter. Over the long term, they are dying. These groups on Wall Street are dying. And I love how this this cultural phenomenon is just creeping into every industry as the internet grows. But the, the I, I can't wait to see where it goes next. The 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 deep effing value guy got doxxed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. And he's he's just some YouTuber, right? He's just some guy, and he looks like Baked Alaska or something. Well, you that's know, some absolute meme lord. That's exactly where I was going with it. A, obviously, these are a group of meme lords, right? Really big group of meme lords. <laughs> same, same with people like Baked Alaska. And these are the people who are bringing the Republic and the world economy to its knees. <laughs> like Baked Alaska running through, like prank calling from Pelosi's office. This guy goes, on the live stream, whatever. It's like, like what is going on? These The autists are actually going to bring down civilization <laughs> through the sheer strength of the belief in what they're doing. Faith is a weapon. <laughs> Faith the, is a more powerful weapon than anything else. I'm telling you, the 40k memes that are coming out of this, Warhammer 40,000 memes, of just them representing the Orc Warg is amazing, <laughs> because it's... I haven't seen them. It theoretically powered in exactly the same way. This will work if we believe it works, and so just we'll get yeah. a billion of us to believe that it works, and it works really well, and that's exactly what's happening now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just... Because that's the thing as well. We're not, we're not dealing with... Um, you know, the Imperium is furious. Yeah, it's you, not, know? you know, media, politics, and global finance, none of these things are built on material no. things. They're all immaterial social constructs. Yeah. In which case, if we can just get enough orcs yeah. to go, red paint makes the, the car go faster... Yeah. Well, then the car will go faster. That's exactly how it works. That's exactly how it works. And all, all of the sort of, you know, the, the orderly races like the Eldar, the Imperium, the Tau, and all that are just like, no, that's not how this works. And so that's exactly how this works. Democrats <laughs> sat around with their charts and their yeah, years exactly. of financial trading. Yeah. Like, this is how the market's yeah. going to work. Nah, just goes I, up. Yeah, baked Alaska <laughs> clone bursts into the office, yeah. you know, screaming. Orcs, 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 orcs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, Sorry. No, no, it's so great. I, I look at the chat, the chat's just full of wah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I didn't think the destruction of the world economy and political system would be so amusing, to be honest. <laughs>